So I posted a video earlier today called 9070 XD Path Tracing Benchmarks using FSR4 at 4K. So I'll be using FSR4 Performance Mode. Just wanted to show people that the 9070 XD is actually capable capable of doing some path tracing. Now, most people don't really rate AMD's ray tracing performance, let alone path tracing performance. So this video kind of surprised a few people maybe. There was a user by the name of Framerate X. Now, this is more going to be an educational video. So hopefully you guys might take something from this. He basically says, bottom line is the 9070 XT is missing critical features and every single one that it does have it is inferior to NVIDIA's offerings. What else is there left to say but besides don't buy this junk and if you already own it, I'm sorry to hear that. So I rebuttal by saying, your 5070 Ti does not have better raster than the 9070 XT. So not inferior in every way, but RT performance is barely any better either, laughing out loud. It really only has the edge in path tracing. So we get into a bit of a back and forth. He's telling me why I'm wrong. So long story short, I said, okay, I'll prove that to you. So he runs some benchmarks and I run some benchmarks. Now he's using um, a 5800X 3D, very, very good AM4 processor and is using an RTX 5070 Ti. I'm not too sure what model. Um, the point I'm making is we're gonna be doing our benchmarks at 4K and everything's gonna be GPU bound. So the, the CPU is gonna be of no consequence. I did ask this user just to run pure raster because that was the argument. I'd never once um, tried to claim that the 5070 XT Ti was slower than the 9070 XT in uh, path tracing or, or even ray tracing most of the time. Um, but he ends up doing some tests, not even sticking to the agreement, basically runs ray tracing in, in two tests other than Cyberpunk. But I'm going to get into the comparison. You guys can see the results for yourself. So first up is Black Myth Wukong. We'll both be running this at 3840 by 2160. And I'll be using FSR 4 native and on the NVIDIA side, we'll be using DLAA via DLSS, cinematic settings with full ray tracing disabled. Now, Blackbeard Wukong uses Lumen, which is a form of software ray tracing, and that's something you cannot turn off. And as a result, this is not a rasterization test, which is what I requested, but I thought it's fine. This is actually an opportunity to, sh to prove when I said that the RTX 5070 Ti's uh, ray tracing performance is not that much better than the 9070 XT, and this game is going to illustrate that. Point I wanted to make as well is that the 9070 XT, they're not all equal. Some of them have dual 8 uh, pin PCI Express connectors, which generally come with a lower power limit. These cards are power limited a lot quicker, which means they'll run lower core clocks and provide lower performance in games that generally use ray tracing, which usually um, hit the power limit a lot easier. Whereas something like a Sapphire Nitro has the PCI Express 5.0 um, power connector. And I know there's a lot of issues with that, but that's another story entirely. But the point is it comes with a higher power limit. So does the other cards with 3X PCI Express um, 8 pin power connectors. So the cards with the higher power limit um, generally and sustain a higher core clock which generally gives you higher performance and that makes all the difference in scenarios like this and we're going to see the difference when it comes to results just how average the rtx 5070 ti's uh, ray tracing performance is when it comes to an i 70 xd that actually has a decent power limit So the results are in, and as you can see, the RX 9070 XT scoring 
35 FPS on average with a minimum of 29. You can see all the settings used there just for confirmation and in comparison to the RTX 5070 Ti, it beats it out by one FPS. And this is a scenario where the RTX 5070 Ti should be superior. Next up is Assassin's Creed Shadows. We both run in the game at native 4K at 3840x2160. Uncapped frame rate using TAA with native AA, so we're not using DLSS or FSR. Um, chromatic aberration is on, but motion blurs off using ray trace global illumination and specular everywhere and the ultra high preset. Now, I requested again a raster performance test, but again, this is another opportunity to show that the RTX 5070 Ti is a ray tracing performance, is nothing special against a capable RX 9070 XT. So the results are in, as you can see, the RX 9070 XT scoring 40 FPS on average and a minimum of 30. When you compare that to the RTX 5070 Ti, you can see it's beating it by 6 FPS as the RTX 5070 Ti scoring 34 FPS with a minimum of 26. So there you go. Another situation where the capable RX 9070 XT doing the business on the RTX 5070 Ti. So next up is Cyberpunk 2077 being played at 4K with no ray tracing. So this is the only test amongst all the games I requested to use your raster. And we're going to see exactly the difference in performance when ray tracing is absent and the RX 9070 XT just gets to flex really. So final results are in as you can see the RX 9070 XT scoring 44 FPS on average with a minimum of 37 FPS. And you can see it's really done a great job here compared to the RTX 5070 only scoring 37 FPS on average. So psycho um, native without any um, ray tracing. The 9070 XT pretty much has its way with the RTX 5070 Ti. And that's something I was just trying to make the point of. But not everyone was getting the message and that's pretty much all i wanted to show off it's not a big deal and um you know hopefully you guys can see that the 9070 xd 
depending on the model you buy, is a very, very capable card. And in this generation, at least, NVIDIA doesn't completely outclass it in every scenario. So that is pretty much it for me, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching.